Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about the HP DL360 Gen 7 Server Memory Upgrade Kits. Uh, for starters, the DL360 Gen 7 is actually the exact same as the Gen 6 from a memory perspective. There are 18 DIMM slots. Um, it takes ECC registered, also known as RDIMM server memory. Uh, the max is the exact same. Uh, according to HP, it'll max out at 288 gigabytes via 18, 16 gigs. Uh, however, the, uh, the actual correct max is 384 gigabytes. You can put in 12, 32 gigs at 1600 megahertz. The question you might ask is, hey, why can you only put in 12, 32 gigs and not go ahead and load it up fully with um, 18 sticks? Well, it's actually really simple. It's called the rank rule. With the rank rule, uh, this is for all boards, not just HP or Dell. Uh, it's super micro. It's just really any board. Uh, basically states that with ECC registered memory, you can only have eight ranks per memory channel. And when we open this up, we'll talk a little bit more about the memory channels, but you will see inside that there are three DIMMs per memory channel uh, for the uh, DL360 Gen 7. And because there are three DIMMs per memory channel, this means that you can only put in two 32 gigs because all 32 gig ECC registers are quad rank. And if you put two in, that gets you to eight ranks and you're officially maxed out for that memory channel. If you put the third, in, third one in, Simple math, you go to 12 and you're above eight and it will start throwing errors and not register the RAM. Uh, so simply put, you can put in 32 gigs and uh, do a little bit more than what HP spec sheet will actually tell you. So anyhow, let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show you a little bit more about the memory channels and uh, just show you the uh, motherboard itself and how you go ahead and upgrade it when you need to um, put in modules. So but before we open it, let's get our ESD gear on because you always want to be safe and make sure that you're protecting the system. Alright, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are good to open the machine and prevent it from getting shocked by any electrostatic. So first things first, you want to make sure the latch is set to unlock. Simply push the button open and pull, op pull the tab up and remove the top. Very simple. You will notice that we actually only have 4 gigs of RAM in here. Uh, we are going to end up putting in uh, 18, 16 gigs. That's the configuration we're actually building for this specific customer. But again, you could load it with 384 gigabytes. And going from four to uh, 288 is gonna be a massive increase in the overall performance. Um, and again, that's one of the cool things about uh, server memory as a whole is that uh, when you're uh, increasing, say, uh, or upgrading your CPU or upgrading your storage, you're really not increasing the overall performance that much. Generally, the CPU is ahead of all the other parts um, and everything is kind of lagging behind the CPU. So upgrading the RAM, I feel like uh, really makes your overall uh, user experience um, and the performance of your computer just a lot more efficient. And you're gonna be very happy with that. So anyhow, let's get into a couple of things here. You'll notice, uh, again, two CPUs. Uh, with the CPUs, uh, uh, CPU 1 controls the first nine DIMM slots, CPU 2 controls the last nine DIMM slots. If you only had one CPU in, you could not load any modules over there. You would need to stick with the, um, the first three memory channels. A um, couple of just you know obvious things, but I just want to point this out to make sure, in, in case there's anyone out there that has run into this error and they're trying to figure out what is going on with their machine. Um, so as we were talking about, there are three memory channels per CPU. You will notice the memory channels go, the, the start of the memory channel has a white tab, so it goes white, black, black, white, black, black, white, black, black, very simple. Uh, this is important for a number of reasons. If you were only going to load in like how it is right now, it only has a, four gigs in via two sticks, uh, you would need to make sure the first module is in the first channel, and within the first channel, it needs to be on the white tab being the first um, DIMM slot of that channel. Uh, so really simple. Also, this is important for the uh, quad rank module. So if you were using a 16 gig 8500 module, which is quad rank, or if you were upgrading it to 384 gigabytes via 32 gigs, all 32 gigs are quad rank, you could only put two DIMMs in, so it would be the first white slot and the second black slot, and that is where uh, you would configure the RAM, or that's where you'd put them in. So let me go ahead and uh, show you how to properly remove it and properly insert a new module. So it's really simple. Uh, first things first, you want to pop open the uh, one of the first tabs and then pop open the second tab. I like to kind of put my hand over it because sometimes they like to shoot up on you. 
and then just simply take it out. Also, I wanted to note real quick, you'll notice with this module uh, that there is a notch in the middle, also known as a key. Uh, this key is important because it prevents you from accidentally putting in the wrong module. If you were to grab a um, buffer desktop module, for instance, the uh, notch is in a different spot, so you physically could not insert it into this board. It would cause damage to the board, so this is uh, an important feature. Same thing if you were to grab an older DDR2 module or a newer DDR4 module, the key is in a different spot, in a different spot for each one, so this will uh, basically just prevent any user errors from happening. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of these 16 gig DIMMs. And again, we're going to line up the notch here. Um, I like to make sure both, both tabs are already open. Simply insert it in. And because uh, when, you, when you click the tab up, sometimes it does not get in the notch. You have to sometimes push down a little bit. Not too hard, but not too gentle because it really does. You'll, see, you'll hear that click there too. It really does take a little bit of pressure. So I'm not going to load all uh, 18 slots up. I'm just going to go ahead and do one channel for you to show you how quick and easy it is. So again, simply just lining up the tabs, lining up the notch, and then just simply clicking the tabs. Very simple. So in a matter of minutes, you can really increase the overall performance of your of your server. And it, with the prices of RAM these days, it, they're really so cheap that for you know a couple hundred bucks, you can really do quite a lot. So anyhow, so we, we went ahead and we did the first channel, and you'll see how simple it really is to upgrade. Um, after that, uh, really, you'd go ahead and you fill the rest up, but you'll you'll see the overall performance increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the top back on. But before we leave, I want to show you one last detail that I think is kind of cool about the uh, 360 Gen 7 as a whole. So I'm going to pull this back here. And right here you'll notice there is what is called the HP Insight Kit. And for the HP Insight Kit, uh, this is pretty cool because it will uh, show you some of the errors and troubleshoot for you. So it'll tell you which DIM is bad. So let's say you had um, DIM number 8 is bad as opposed to telling you that that channel is bad. That's how Dell or Supermicro would do it. It tells you the exact slot. So that's very helpful. It also will tell you if you have a uh, failed fan module, if you have a um, bad power supply, it also does predictive failure, so it's kind of cool. Um, so overall, I always like to show that to people so that they can um, just, you know, have a, an additional troubleshooting feature. So anyhow, well, thank you for stopping by today to check out the DL360 Gen 7 uh, server memory upgrade kits. So if you have any questions and you are just looking for some general support, feel free to reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com, or if you're looking for an upgrade yourself, and you need a quote, please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Well, thanks again for stopping by and have a great day.